<laughs> That's what it's about. This is what I'm talking about in, in regards to trauma and recovery. Everyone, I think, whether it was, you know, being down at the G20 before and on the weekend, to witnesses, to just people watching on YouTube with the videos, it, most people have been traumatized. <clears throat> now, what I would like to just <laughs> tell you is knowledge is power where trauma is concerned and recovering from trauma. There is a difference, though, between post-traumatic stress disorder and post-traumatic stress or acute trauma. And right now, I bet almost everyone has been experiencing acute trauma. The difference being is that post-traumatic stress disorder is a mental health disorder. And basically, it's post-traumatic stress has the same symptoms as post-traumatic stress disorder, only it's, it's not as debilitating. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, and you look, uh, Judith, Judith Herman, who's a specialist in trauma, has a great definition of acute trauma, and that's psychological trauma is an affliction of the powerless. At the moment of trauma, the victim is rendered helpless by overwhelming force. When the force is that of nature, we speak of disasters. When the force is that of human beings, we speak of atrocities. And that's what happened on the weekend and the days leading up to it, the weeks leading up to it. So some of your ordinary responses to the acute trauma are just like po it's post-traumatic stress. Dissociation, you know, feeling numb, um, forgetfulness, you know, reliving the event, whether it's through nightmares, flashbacks, perhaps on the subway going through the downtown core, you know, hearing other people's stories, thinking of your own story or your own experience. There's even denial of what happened. Couldn't happen to me. You know, could not have happened in Canada. Could not happen on the streets of Toronto. There's no way. That's very much a part of the symptoms of the stress, this post-traumatic stress or acute trauma. The other part, the other symptom is the desire to shout out loud exactly what happened. Okay? It's so important to understand what you're going through. I cannot stress that. It, to recover, to go from a victim to a survivor. Knowledge is power. Understand what's going on for you. The other part, too, is to understand what the perpetrator, and I'm going to use the term perpetrator for the police. Okay? The perpetrator had their own psychological tactics. We saw the physical tactics that they were using, the sound cannons, the rubber bullets, you know, the their batons, the sh like it, all of that were the, the physical tactics. The psychological tactics, the detention, the kettling, isolating people, you know, monopolizing perception. You know, just a lot of different things. In fact, Amnesty International 1973 published Bit Bitterman's Chart of Coercion which actually talks about the psychological tactics used by perpetrators. When you understand what the perpetrators were, were trying to do, you'll understand how to recover from that, and also what you're going to be up against in the future, whether it's through more demonstrations or even through the court process. It's just really important to understand Again, I can't stress, you know, I can't stress the importance of knowledge is power. Well, the perpetrator is going to have some more things coming up. The things that we've seen, their response to what happened. Okay, and this is also part of the trauma because this can re-victimize people. The messages they're going to put out or have been putting out, it never happened. Never used rubber bullets. The victim lies, you know. Um, the victim exaggerates. The victim brought it on 
him or herself, just like what we saw happen at Spadina and Queen, well, you know, the citizens should, have been, should not have been out on the street. Mm -hmm. You know? How about, it's time to forget and move on. No public mm -hmm. inquiry. Mm -hmm. You know? The goal of the perpetrator, post-trauma, is to make sure no one listens to the victims. Not the media, not the courts, not the citizens who, who weren't here to experience it. And they're gonna have very impressive arguments, okay? Well, if you look at the, the recovery stages, I can break it into three simple stages recovering from this trauma, this type of trauma. The first is safety, establishing safety. You know, whether it's an environmental safety to your own body having control over your own body and your bodily functions. You know, making sure you have sleep, like enough sleep, and that you're able, you know, to eat nutritious food. You, you drink when you can, uh, water, you know. Uh, I'd, I'd stay away from the alcohol and, and whatnot just because that can actually prevent you from the recovery process. Um, <laughs> although, you know, Part of, the, part of the symptoms, too, is you want to forget, right? Well, the more you tell your story, the more it will become less of a reliving of, of the events and more of telling a story, sharing your experience. Okay, so after safety, think of remembrance and mourn, mourning, okay? Grieve, everyone's lost something just looking at what happened in the days leading up to the G20 and, and the weekend. Allow yourself to grieve, allow yourself to feel angry. You know, there's that, that old saying about you need to embrace something before you can let it go. Embrace your feelings, you know, your experiences. Remember them. You may not always be able to remember exactly what, you know, all the details, write them down share them with your supports you know the connecting is and reconnection is the third stage this type of an event is incredible and like these types of gatherings of of connecting with each other this is what's going to also make the big difference so anyhow there there are um, little brochures pamphlets about trauma and recovery at the back, please feel free to educate yourself on the issues. Um, and I'll be up in the third floor in the breathing space. So thanks very much and I wish you all the best. Mobile Broadcast News